Good morning, welcome to Factum Live. Today I have a few projects to do on the 2017 CRV. Okay, we're right about the half inch mark. So we're about a half an inch over full. Oil dilution on our 2017 Honda CRV with 82,511 miles. The vehicle is hardly new now. We are well into a used vehicle. As promised in my last video, I wanted to go over one last oil dilution report. And that was because this dilution report would land exclusively into the what I would call our extreme cold weather. During this extreme cold timeline, which usually is from December, January until now, uh, this is the coldest weather that we experience, and it would be the coldest weather this vehicle sees. So with that said, at, after the last oil change, we exclusively used premium fuel, which in our area is 91 octane without ethanol in it, and we went ahead and just did our normal business. Now, I had originally intended to change the oil a little closer to 3,000 miles, However, life gets ahead, and here we are. I ended up with 5,491 miles on the oil sample. And we'll get right to it. You can see down here at the bottom, uh, we had a fuel percentage of 3.3%, and that was exclusively using 91 octane. We still have oil dilution problems here. I've been stating that you know, using premium fuels going to deliver substantially better results. And I, I would argue that it does. One of the benefits here, we can compare this to last year, uh, which would have been 2021. So February 13, 2021 at 65,650 miles. And we had 5,200 miles on that oil service. And we'll get right down here. The fuel dilution at that time was 7.3%. So I'm going to add last year when we had um, only utilized 87 octane, I had 7.3%. Now, I'm not going to get into the differences in weather from last year to this year. In general, when I do an oil change in February, that oil service has been in a condition that is, is quite cold. My takeaway here, issue number one, is that there is a performance enhancement, less oil dilution when 91 octane is utilized. Which showing my vehicle, that, that's a given. Number two, there's a temperature component. If you live in the far northern regions of where weather is very cold, there is definitely going to be a temperature component to it. Now, this vehicle will drive 25 miles one way and 25 miles back. Apparently, that's not enough to eliminate the dilution issue with weather-related. Um, and number three, becoming a little more apparent, and that is potential hardware problems with the vehicle. A lot of times we think about one day the vehicle works and the next day the vehicle doesn't. Unfortunately, with this vehicle, and I'm not the first one to come up with this, but with injectors starting to become dirty, spray patterns start not as nice, not work as designed, that could potentially lead to higher dilution issues. All right, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for continuing to watch. After the oil change, my wife took the vehicle on a 450 mile trip one way and then was planning on coming back two weeks later on another 450 mile trip. In that two week window, she was um, in a town where she didn't really have to drive too far, maybe three or four miles at a time. Um, I was told that it was fairly cold, you know, 30s, 20s. Uh, there was a few nights that were down um, zero degrees. Anyway, the point of this is that the vehicle really never got up to operating temperature. However, during that time, I did have her continue to utilize premium fuel, both down and back from this trip. And a little bit of issue um, came about, about 120 miles, 150 miles into the trip back home. And that was, she, my wife pulled into a gas station, um, was about ready to get gas when all of a sudden the car started to freak out. 
And of course she called me immediately and it was actually kind of challenging to figure out exactly what was going on. But after she started listing off everything and then including um, the emissions related um, notice, you know, I kind of had suspicions that it wasn't necessarily the car freaking out. It was mostly one thing. <clears throat> so unfortunately, I didn't have any way for my wife to check or clear codes. Um, she was, I, I actually did have her check the oil. She reported that the oil level at that point was um, at the very top of the orange. Um, it didn't look like it was any higher than the orange, but it was taking up the full orange on the dipstick. This was on, of course, on a Friday afternoon. Um, because the vehicle was still running okay, I actually had her continue to drive it. Didn't have cruise control, didn't have any of the driving nannies that are available on this car. I had an ear full when she got home. I mean, this thing, <laughs> you know, you take for granted the cruise control and when it doesn't work or it's programmed not to work because there's a, a fault found, um, it is it is pretty annoying. Even a little more salt on the wound with this is that when she did get home and I went to go start it up, see what was going on, it was all cleared. Um, the car started up fine. There was no check engine light. There was nothing going on. And she had um, stopped for fuel, stopped for brakes here and there. So the car at th that those times you know, started up fine, but it was still reporting the air. I installed my blue driver scan tool that I, I picked up. And I picked this up because I have an older Genesis, OTC Genesis scan tool that was good up to, I think, Asian 2005. It won't even communicate with the CRV um, and generic OBD2. So I needed something to be able to, you know, not fly blind with this car. And I actually, actually two weeks prior to this incident, had purchased this blue driver um, scan tool and for the amount of money and the data that it, it does share, I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with it. It doesn't do any um, sort of communication. I can't program anything with it. But, you know, for the 120 or 100, 130 bucks, whatever it costs, it definitely a decent value for at least looking at some data. So real quick here, this is what I'm going to share with you. So after pulling the codes, we had a P0172. And you can see here, this was the freeze frame data that was showing when this code set. And of course, with the P0172, you see the short-term fuel trim at negative 22, long-term fuel trim at negative 22. So that's a real big um, evidence here that it's trying to pull back the, uh, the injectors as much as it can and my understanding is this code will set if both these values are negative 20 for some time so it's a little bit uh it to say the least i was a little bit concerned because she actually had to turn around and um, go back down to the area that she was which is you know 900 miles round trip and this is supposed to be the you know, this is our lowest mileage, newest vehicle. It has problems. So with this one, though, uh, the one thing I would point out is you can see our runtime since the engine was this engine was running down the highway at for the last 75 minutes. I'm going to come out with a video that shows me replacing the fuel injectors on this car. The reason why I decided to go with the fuel injectors, I don't have any sort of way to do like a balance test or you know, I guess I could have taken it into the dealer and had that done, had someone else um, make that assessment. However, um, starting at really the 65,000 mile mark, I, I made a comment in one of the videos, I think it was one of the first videos that I did with the oil change sampling, was that the oil dilution seems to be getting worse on this vehicle. And really in the last year it seems to me at least my interpretation is that it's been a slow march forward or upward as far as the the oil dilution goes i was leaning towards a hardware problem and i think there's there's really only two hardware problems that could exist that could cause this uh, one would be you have fuel injectors that are leaking or have spray patterns that are not as of designed and are leading to increased fuel dilution. The other is a high pressure fuel pump that 
um, is contaminating the oil through cross leaking. I, however, have not had any other codes. You know, I'm not having uh, pressure codes. I'm not having starting issues. This has been sort of in the last 20,000 miles, seems to be incrementally getting worse. And there was a time where, you know, especially in the summertime, if I'm using premium fuel that I really am not having to deal with oil dilution. Uh, but what I ended up deciding to do was go ahead and replace the fuel injectors the injectors I, I ended up buying brand new injectors from honda which were i don't know 365 dollars delivered to the door i think what is going on with this car was that there was a lot of in-town driving going on the injectors are compromised uh, it led to oil level or the oil becoming fairly heavily contaminated with fuel and as soon as my wife started driving this thing on the highway um, it was leading to sort of a rapid loss of that fuel from the oil 75 minute mark where this kicked on uh, she was actually four hours into her trip so the oil was good and hot and clearly you know that that was leading to uh leading to some problems at least that's what the theory is so I'm going to launch this video before I launch the injector replacement video. If you're at all interested in the injectors being replaced and that process, by all means, continue to uh, look for that video. Maybe subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified. So thanks for watching.